Hi everyone, I'm Tamara from Tasty Tea Cakes and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this little model. Okay, so it's just a basic figure model. So today, rather than uh, just making a little person, I'm going to be making like a little chef. So to start off with, um, I've got, um, I've pre-coloured all my sugar paste. Now if you are um, colouring up your sugar paste, I would recommend um, using the paste or gel colours. Don't use the liquid colours because they will go really runny. If you're using... Um, Sorry, your paste will go really run it. If you're using the paste colours, make sure that when you're adding your colour, you uh, stick a cocktail stick in, add your colour in, um, and then when you need, if you need to add more colour in, make sure you don't double dip and you use a clean cocktail stick. Uh, right, so I've got some black paste that was already bought pre-coloured. I've got some white paste. I've got some skin tone, which I've made up with a uh, skin tone colour and a little touch of chestnut to give it a bit of uh, richness. And then my hair colour I have made with chocolate, chestnut and dark brown. So it's a mixture of the three and then I've got a little bit of the pink there, which is just a normal pink gel colour. So today I'm going to be using um, Saracino. Um, Saracino is a modelling paste that's got a uh, cocoa it's made with cocoa butter so it's quite soft and malleable um you could also use the Renshaw's flour paste if you wanted to uh, flour and modeling paste it is but it does dry out pretty quick so um you'd have to like work in some tricks and that to keep it like nice and soft um or you can use uh, just normal sugar paste and add in some tylose or cmc just to make sure it it firms up harder so uh the little models that i've made here uh, just turn them around these guys, oh, I've knocked a nose off. <laughs> These guys were made with just normal sugar paste and a bit of um, tylose. I'll have to put a nose back on her in a bit. Put my nose there. Right, so to start off with, I'm going to um, start off by making the trousers. So I've already softened up my icing. It's nice and smooth. I'm just going to give it a good firm roll between my hands to make sure that all the creases and cracks are out. Then I'm going to roll it into a sausage in my hands. Okay, let's move that one's out of the way. I'm going to try and make it thinner at the ends and thicker in the middle. So I want nice thin ends, but you can see already it's starting to take shape. So I want the thinner legs. I'm going to do it between my hands, speed things up a bit. The trick is you want them even. You don't want a, a fat leg and a thin leg. Okay, so we're making two relatively similar shaped legs. Okay, and then this big bit in the middle, that's going to be the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, push the legs around. Okay, then we're just going to work the shape of the body. Okay, making sure that your legs are the same thickness. Okay, pick them up, have a look at it. Is one thicker than the other? Do they look even? Right, I'm just going to put some little knees in. So I'm putting two fingers either side, pressing down and squeezing in. And then just shaping it at the side. Okay, smoothing out any fingerprints that I might have left in there. Okay, got one little knee in. Turning it around and doing the same on the other side. Pressing down, squeezing in. And then just smoothing out any cracks. Okay, so I've got some knees there. Then I'm just going to trim it off where the ankles are going to be. Okay. And there I've got my legs. What I'm going to do now is just get um, my stitching tool. Okay, so it's a quilting tool, stitching tool. I'm just going to run it up the side of the legs on the outside. Okay, let's do it this way to add some detail in and I'm going to go up the inside of the legs as well. You don't have to do this, it's just whether or not if you want to add more detail. Right, I'm just going to use the pointy end of the quilting tool to put some creases in my trousers. So think about where you would naturally have creases, so like in the back of the legs, uh, where the back of the knees are. Have creases. Uh, you might have creases around the ankles where it's resting on the shoes on the outside. I'm not going to put a bum crack or anything like that in. I think that's a bit much. Okay, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Now you position your legs where you want them. 
Now I'm just going to put my uh, legs on a board so that when I'm moving it around, I'm not going to keep um, distorting the shape of it. So just putting it to one side, I'm going to do my shoes now. So those little bits that we chopped off the end of the legs, I'm going to line up the, the ends and then I'm going to trim them so that they're roughly the same size. So I've got two little balls the same size. When you do this, make sure that you roll them. Have a feel. If one feels bigger than the other or one looks bigger than the other, which this one slightly does, take a bit off it. You want your feet to be the same rather than one big and one little one. Right, so I've got nice smooth balls. Um, I'm just going to pinch it one end to create this cone shape. Um, and then I'm just going to squish it, okay, so that I've got a flat teardrop shape. And I'm going to do the same with the other. So roll it between my fingers, pinch one end, and then squeeze it. So it's not really flat, but it's flattened down a little bit. And then I just want to try and make them roughly this the same shape, okay. And if you can see lots of colour on my fingers, it's from when I coloured the hair up before. Right, so I'm just going to take the feet now. I've put a bit of water on the bottom of my legs and I'm just pushing the feet in. Okay. As you can see, she's got some little feet now. I'm going to um, use the, not the sharp end of my, my knife, but the blunt end, the back of the knife. And I'm just going to put some little lines in where the feet are, uh, the heels are on the feet to add a bit of detail. Okay. I'm just going to turn my feet out to the side a bit to make it look a, a little bit more natural and straight up feet. Okay, and that's our legs. So the next part is uh, the body. So I'm just going to take my white paste now. If you have been using the um, modeling paste um, or the sugar paste and you've got black residue on your hands, um, or if you've been using a different color because you don't have to use black, I'd make sure you just go and wash your hands uh, first before you start working with white because it could just completely ruin your paste. So I'm going to roll it between my hands. Okay, I've just give it a bit of a work to make sure it's all, all the ingredients are all activated and it's nice and um, mouldable. And I'm just going to roll it into a nice smooth ball. Right, what I'm going to do is put my hands together at the bottom and just roll it between my two, the two hands. So I've got this teardrop shape again. I'm going to put it down and I'm just going to flatten it, just the, the tiniest touch, okay? Now, if this was a man, I would leave him like that, okay? I, I'd do the next steps, but without doing this step. Now, this is a lady, so she needs some uh, lady body parts. So to give her a bit of shape, I'm just going to put one finger halfway and the other just above where, the, about a centimetre above where it is. And I'm just going to press down a little bit and squeeze in. Okay, now this should give a bit of shape to the chest. Okay. You might want to spend a bit of time on this, making sure you've got all your creases and cracks out and that it's um, it's formed properly. Making sure that she's got a bit of a flat tummy. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is chop off the top bit where the neck is and the bottom bit where the body is, so that I've got nice, sharp edges. Just put them bits out of the way. Now what you should really be doing with your paste when you're not using it, is putting it in a bag. So if you was using the Renshaws, it would dry out very fast. So you wanna keep sure that you keep that paste, uh, really look after it and put it in a bag. The Saracino doesn't dry out as quick. You've got more working time with it. So that's why I'm not putting it in a bag um, just while I make this model. But the minute I'm done with it, I will be bagging it up. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just, Pulling in where the neck bit is, okay. Making sure everything's nice and smooth. And then this bottom bit here, I'm gonna put my uh, finger in the middle and I'm just gonna pinch with my thumb all the way around so that we get like a cupped effect. So it's making uh, the bottom of the body like um, an open shirt, shall we say. It's gonna flow like a shirt, like fabric when it's sat on top. So you can see it's got a really nice shape to it. Cupped in the middle, so it's gonna sit on top of the legs, but it's got this really nice natural shape to it. 
Now what I want to do is add the details in for my chef's jacket. So I want the uh, join coming across and off centre down the body. Okay, I'm just putting the markings in for now. I can tidy them up when it's stuck onto the legs. Okay. Right, so next step is I'm going to get my legs. I'm going to put a bit of water in that area that's cupped. And I'm just going to sit it on top of the legs. And I'm just going to push it down and stick it down. I'm not being overly firm with it because I don't want to distort all that paste. Um, and I want to make sure it's in the right place as well because I don't want it at all. It's got like a massive bum. <sighs> okay, so I'm just tweaking it, making sure it all sits nice. And then I'm just going to go over that line that I put in the, the top. As you can see there, we're starting to look a bit like a chef. Now I'm just going to put some details in with a cocktail stick for buttons. So I'm just poking little holes in down the body. Like these are supposed to be the poppers on the chef jacket. Okay. Like that. The next thing I'm going to do is get a bit of my um, skin tone and create a neck. Now, I'm going to need something to hold my head onto my body. So I'm going to insert a cocktail stick down the centre of where the neck is, all the way down into the bum. Okay. And then I'm going to put a, a second cocktail stick in because I'm going to want that to hold my head on. Okay. And I want that to stick out higher. Uh, this is going to give a bit of support into the body. Now, if you was doing this and somebody was eating it, I definitely wouldn't use a cocktail stick, okay? I would use um, spaghetti just because in case it, somebody picks it up and bites the head off, uh, they don't want to be getting a big mouthful of um, wood, woody, spiky cocktail stick. So make sure if it, you're using spaghetti, uh, if it's going to be eaten, if not, make sure that you're telling the person that the top is not edible. Right, so uh, I've just got a little bit of skin tone. I've rolled it into a ball and then just rolled it in between my fingers. I'm going to flatten the ends off with my other fingers so that I've got a cylinder shape. Okay, and then I'm just going to thread that onto my neck. Now, my neck is quite long, but it will get hidden uh, with my head when, once my head sits on. You don't want a too short neck because it will just disappear when you add the head on. Um, I'm just going to add a, a collar to my neck. So I'm just going to get um, a little strip. Just using my scalpel to make one end straight. And I'm just going to put a bit of water around the join on the neck. Okay. I'm taking the nice straight end and I'm putting it not quite central, off centre, because chef's jackets don't tend to um, meet in the middle. And I'm just going to work that around and then trim it so that there's a gap. If you were just doing a jumper or something, you could just put that all the way around. Okay, but you can see... From there, I've got my little chef's jacket collar. I'm just going to add some creases into my body, like we did with the legs, uh, to add a bit of movement, to make it look a bit more natural. She's had a hard day at work. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is make some arms. So I'm just getting that leftover white paste, and I'm just rolling it between my, my hands to make a sausage, making sure all the creases and cracks are out. Okay, you don't want it too thin because it'll look like spaghetti arms, but you don't want it too thick and chunky either. Let's just have a look at that. It's a, a bit thinner than the legs. So what I'm going to do now is um, just hold it up against my body and see where they, how long I want my arms to be, where they're going to sit. And I'm just going to mark it with my nail. And then I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to cut another arm exactly the same length so that I know they're going to match. 
okay now for the arms you're going to take one end and just squeeze it flat between two fingers okay then you're going to rest it over one finger and you're just going to roll it between two fingers and that creates your elbow and then at the bottom where the wider bit is you're just going to put a little hole in for the sleeve so I'll just show you that again so you're flattening one end rolling it between two fingers for the other bit for the elbow and then the bottom bit you're just putting a little hole in okay and then I'm going to stick those arms on so I'm just going to get a little bit of water put it onto my model or you can stick it on the insides of your arms and I'm just going to put the stick the arms onto the the body now her arms are going to be resting on her lap so I'm going to put the the arms on I'm just going to push it in a little bit at the side because it she's sticking out a bit and the arms are looking a bit funny again when you're making yours adjust it as as you need to So there we go, she's got her arms on now. Right, what we're gonna do now is put some little hands on. Now I'm not going into anything too technical with the hands, I'm literally just making some little balls because this is a simple figure. So I'm just gonna put a bit of um, water in the sleeve where I want it to stick and then on the legs where it's gonna stick down. So I'm just gonna push the hand into the sleeve sit the arm on and then just push it press it down so it's sat nice and again for the other side a bit of water inside the sleeve and on the leg making sure that the hand is inside the sleeve and then just sticking it down okay And there we've got our body. I'm just going to put a bit more detail in the elbows, elbow creases. A few little creases on the, the arms. Okay. So we've got our body. Now, if you find that your model's leaning back a bit, you just want to prop up the back with um, a pot of, of something to make sure it doesn't start falling backwards. Okay, so the next step is making the face. So I'm gonna take a lump of my flesh color and I'm gonna roll it nice and smooth. I'm gonna hold it up against my model and see if it looks about right. Okay, test it out. If it's too big, take some off. If it's too small, add a bit in. If it's too big, it's going to look like a lollipop head. If it's too small, she's going to look out proportion like she's got a pea head. So really um, have a good look and think, oh, does that look about right? Okay. I'm going to make my ball nice and smooth. And then I'm just rolling it very slightly between two hands to make an oval shape. Okay. I'm going to use my little finger and I'm going to put it halfway and I'm just going to roll it gently halfway across to put this indentation in. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to put my finger um, at the, the bottom of the face and I'm just going to pinch it a little bit to pull a chin out. Okay, making sure that you're not getting big flat lines on the face. Okay, so you're just wanting to pinch that chin out to add a bit of shape. Okay. The next bit is uh, putting eye sockets in. So I'm going to take my two index fingers and just push in two little holes. Use my middle fingers because my index fingers are a bit sticky. Now the back of the head is going to go flat but that's okay because I'm going to co cover it up anyway with some uh, hair. It looks a bit upside down to you guys, doesn't it? Is this the right way now? 
So I'm just going to smooth out some of the uh, lines, making sure that I haven't got any too many creases in. You know, I want it to have shape and curves to the face for the sockets and the chin. Okay. So I've got the initial shape of my face. The next thing I'm going to do is put a little nose on. So I've just got a little ball of um, modelling paste. Again, in the flesh colour. I'm just going to put put a little bit where the end of the nose is and just stick that on. Okay, I'm just going to pinch that bridge of the nose again to add a bit more definition. Okay, just using my cocktail stick or the end of a Dresden tool, I'm just going to pop two little nostrils in. As you can see, little nose there. Okay. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is um, using using my ball tool, I'm just going to put two little holes in for eyes, two little eye sockets. I'm only doing a very simple face, okay? So the next bit is getting two little balls of black for the eyes. You want them the same size and you want them to fill them holes. Checking that your balls for your eyes are the same size. And I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, water, put that into the sockets and just pop my eyes in there. Now you could do white eyes with black details on, but just because um, this is a really simple model, I'm just showing you the really simple way of doing it. So I'm going to put some little lips on. So I'm getting, um, again, just a little ball of pink modelling paste. I'm going to put a little bit of water on there and I'm just rolling it into a small oval. I'm just going to put that onto my face like so. And using the back of my knife, I'm just going to press it in to create some lips. Okay. I'm going to use my cocktail stick and in the corners of the lips, I'm just going to put a little hole and pull it up. So she's got like a little smile and some little dimples. Okay. See, I've got a few creases and bumps. Just smooth them out a bit. So that's our initial face. Um, what I'm going to do now is add a bit more detail to it. So I've got a little bit of um, just pink rainbow dust on a brush. I'm just going to give her some rosy cheeks. Just take some of that excess dust off. <coughs> okay, so she's got a bit of rosiness to her cheeks. Um, I've got a edible pen. Now you could paint this on if you wanted to. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm just going to um, paint on some eyelashes. <coughs> okay, one second. I'm just going to pause it. Be back in a sec. Okay, so we've got our eyelashes on. The next thing we're going to do is put some little ears on. So I've just got two little balls of ice in. Just going to put them at the same level as her eyes. Try and stick that on. Well, it's just below her eyes, really. Kind of in between um, the level of her nose and her eye sockets. Then I'm just getting a smaller ball tool and just pushing the ears in, okay, to add the centre of the ear. And she's got a little ears now. The next bit is some eyebrows. So I've got a little bit of black. I'm just going to roll that between my fingers so that I've got two thinner ends and a thicker end in the middle. I'm going to put a bit of water on where the eyebrows are. 
and I'm putting the thinner end at one side and the thicker end towards the middle and then I'm just going to trim it off okay and I'm just going to put that other bit on the other side of the face Okay, position them to how you want them. Give them an give her an expression if you wanted to. Just tidy that up around there. And I've just got a little um, white pen that I'm going to put some details on the eyes with. You could just use a little bit of white paste as well. Okay, so that's the face. Right, so I'm gonna add the head onto my body now. So I'm gonna put a bit of water just onto the neck and I want the head to sit further back than the front of the head. So I want it not to be central. Making sure that it's down firmly. If your neck's too long, you can always trim it off. Okay, so there we go. We've got a little model there with um, no hair. So the next step is to be adding the hair to it. Okay, so ideally you want to wait until your head's dry and set before adding hair. Um, otherwise, you can end up misshaping it. But just so I can get the video finished, I'm going to do it now. So I've got a little bit of brown. Okay, and I'm going to make like a little um, cap to go on the back. So I'm getting a ball and I'm just squishing it between my fingers. Okay, and I'm just going to put it over the back of the head. I don't want it to go all the way to the front. I just want it to like fit around, around the ears, around the back of the head because she's going to be having a hair up. Okay, so you can see that it goes all the way around and when you look at it from the front, it looks like a little weird cap. Now I'm just going to use my Dresden tool to add some lines into the hair because it's all going to be coming back into a bun. So I just want to add some detail. Be careful how hard you push because if your head's not set, you don't want to be um, squishing your head. Okay. Right, so the next stage is adding the bun on. So I'm just going to get a little ball of um, paste and I'm just going to stick it onto the back of the head. Okay, I'm going to use a ball tool to add a bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then again, with the dressing tool, just adding a bit of detail. Into the paste. You can see that now. It's got a little bun. Okay. Now, I want to add the detail now to the front of the face. Mm -hmm. So, I like to do this mm -hmm. by making... Um, like long teardrop shapes. So it's thinner at one end and then fatter towards the top. I'm gonna start, she's gonna have a bit of a center part, um, an off center parting. So I'm gonna stick it to the front and then I'm just gonna work it around the ears. So I'll stick it on and then I'll show you. Okay, that's the first bit. Any gaps that you can see, you want to make sure that you're filling them in with uh, strips of hair. I'm going to do another bit over the other side. You 
can do a variety variety of um, shapes and sizes as well. You can add curls into the ends. The more you build it up, the more natural it will look. Okay, so there it is. With all the hair built up, you could add a bit more detail if you wanted to, like um, making more hair lines into those bits of hair that you've added up. But I'm quite happy with that. There it is. Nice, simple, basic figure. Just wanted to add if you want to add glasses onto your figure you could either make some out of paste or you can do it with wire so the way i do it with wire is i get one end and i fold it over something circular like a paintbrush or in this case a, a pen so i've got a little circle okay then i do it again on the other side so You can see I've got two circles now, although they're not even. It, the wire just needs manipulating a bit. So I'm just going to make sure that they're both facing the same way. Uh, you might want to curl them in a bit to make them a bit more close to the face. And then you just want to bend the arms over your fingers. Okay. Then what you can do is just get some scissors. Or some plier cutters, wire cutters, plier cutters, and trim the ends off. Okay, uh, and then you can put some glasses on your your model if you wanted to. Um, now, um, if you obviously, if it was um, an edible topper, you would make sure that your glasses are made of something edible, um, like sugar paste or modelling paste. Um, and I'm going to put these on in a second into my little model. Um, make sure as well that they fit your model you don't want them to be too wide you might have to manipulate them a bit to fit onto a face and you don't want them to stick out the back of the head either so make sure you put them on there we go so now she's got some lovely little glasses And the gauge wire for this was just a 24 gauge wire. 